In this video, I'm going to show you how to capture incredible reflection photos with your iPhone. Now, if your goal is to capture the kind of images that really stand out and that really attract the attention of the viewer, you should try to show the world to people like they've never seen it before. And one great way to accomplish that goal is by including reflections in your photos. You might be wondering, where can you find opportunities for reflection photography? Well, it turns out that these opportunities are almost everywhere. And as a photographer, you have to learn to recognize them. And that is a topic that we'll come back to over and over again in this course. There are great photo opportunities all around you, but you as a photographer have to train your mind to recognize those photo opportunities so that you'll know what to look for and how to use these opportunities to get the best shots possible. Now, in order to take reflection photos, the first thing you're gonna need is a reflective surface. And there's a lot of different things you could use as a reflective surface. Perhaps the most common example is the surface of water. Whenever you have a surface of water, and this could be a lake, a river, the sea, or just a tiny little puddle in the city, that is a great opportunity for reflection photos. But of course, it's not just water where you can capture reflection photos. You could literally use anything that reflects light, including things like ice, glass surfaces, storefronts, shiny cars, or any other things that reflect light. So there are reflective surfaces all around. You just have to learn how to recognize them. All right, that's enough talking for now. Let me show you how to capture beautiful reflection photos with the iPhone. So right now I'm standing on this beach and what's interesting about this specific spot is that we have these puddles that are kind of all around me. And those puddles to me represent a reflection photography opportunity. Now, if I look at the sea itself, you'll see there are waves and those waves, as beautiful as they are, are going to prevent me from capturing a mirror-like reflection. With that said, if I walk just a little bit away from the sea, here, closer to these puddles, I think I'll have a better shot of capturing reflections. Now, what we also have here is my daughter, Emily. She's playing in the water. It's a beautiful, warm evening, and she's gonna be the subject for our reflection photos. Now, one of the first things you're gonna notice when you look at the screen of my iPhone is that if I'm standing up here, if I'm taking this shot from the height of a standing person, you don't really see much of a reflection. But look what happens as I start to get lower. Now, this is really interesting, but the lower I get with my iPhone, the more that reflection starts to stand out. And something else is happening at the same time. As I lower my iPhone and as it gets closer and closer to the surface of water, everything is eliminated from behind my daughter. Now I have my daughter with just that sky in the background. And that also looks really interesting. You're also gonna see that since we have those waves, I don't get a perfect mirror-like reflection. I think it's interesting because it distorts the reflection, but if those waves get too strong, then the reflection might just disappear altogether. So it's a balancing act. Just a little bit of waves is fine. Too much waves aren't gonna look good. There's one more thing I have to be careful with, and that is the focus. Now, the out of focus of the iPhone usually works really well, but here, I'm presenting my iPhone with a really challenging situation because it doesn't really know exactly where I want to focus. I know I want to focus on my subject, but the iPhone looks at the entire scene and half of the image is really close to me. It's literally right here, reflected in the water. And what that means is that the autofocus will often set focus much closer than it should be. In other words, the focus might accidentally get set on that water in the foreground rather than my subject in the background. So if I want to be absolutely sure that the image will be in focus, I need to tap and hold my finger on my subject. And now both focus and exposure are locked on my daughter, Emily. I'm gonna see if I can get my daughter to stand up. I think that would make for a nicer reflection shot. Emily, can you stand up please? All right, now that looks just beautiful. I have my daughter in that reflection. That reflection is getting distorted just a little bit. We have just the right amount of waves, not too much, but just enough to give these photos a nice distortion. And that looks really cool. All 
All right, so here, the reflection is no longer appearing in the water. It instead appears on this wet sand, and that actually creates for a better reflection, or at least a cleaner reflection, I should say. So I can really create a beautiful mirror-like image. Now, this does look stunning, and for these mirror-like compositions, the way you typically frame them is with a symmetrical composition. So you'd make sure you have just as much space above the horizon as you do below the horizon. And that way, you can create a perfectly symmetrical reflection photo. Emily, can you stand up for me, please? Thank you. That looks beautiful. All right, now she's walking. And shoot this using burst mode. That looks stunning. All right, she's walking back in. Now my daughter is playing in the sand and that does look kind of cool. We have that perfect mirror-like reflection. So I'll grab some shots. And I think I got the exact shot that I was looking for. And while I'm really happy about how that shot turned out, I don't want you to get the wrong idea that reflection photography is something you can just do on the beach. There are great opportunities for reflection photography pretty much everywhere. So for the next part of this video, we're gonna head to city center to see what kind of reflection photos we can capture there. This time, we've come to the city, and it was just raining earlier today, and we still have some puddles scattered around here. And I think that could also be a really unique reflection photo opportunity. Now, in this specific location, I'm gonna attempt to do something more difficult. I'm gonna try to capture the kind of shot where I have a person reflected in the puddle. Now, that's gonna be a more challenging shot, because obviously I don't control other people, and I have to make sure I frame it up exactly right so that all I see in that puddle is the reflection of the person. So let me get out my iPhone and let's frame up this shot. Now from this angle, I'm pretty much looking straight down at the puddle. And that's why I don't have much of a reflection at all. All I really have here is the pavement. So I need to reposition myself and take just a few steps back and as I start to do that, you'll see that this reflection is coming into the frame. And now that building in the background, that is appearing in the reflection. Now the building is nice, but that's not the shot that I need. If I wanna create the kind of shot where there's a person that really stands out in the reflection, I don't wanna position them against the building because they're gonna get lost against that building. Instead, I want to position that person against reflected sky. That's gonna be a much simpler reflection so I'm gonna have my subject, the person, reflected against a very, very simple background. So as I start moving to the left, what's gonna happen is that the building will go out of the reflection. And now you'll see that the only thing I have on my screen is the sky that's being reflected off that puddle. And that's perfect. That's what I need. Because when someone walks into that reflection, they're gonna be positioned against a really simple background, and I think they're gonna stand out a lot. Now I'm almost ready to start taking shots, but there's one more thing I wanna change, and that is the exposure. So right now, you'll see that the sky that's reflected in the puddle is a little bright, and also if I darken the image a little bit, I think that person that's gonna be in that reflection is gonna stand out more. So what I'm gonna do is open the hidden menu, I'll tap on the exposure adjustment, and the slider comes up, and I'm gonna take it down two stops to minus 0.7. And right here, I think I have the right exposure value. So I'm gonna close the hidden menu, and now all I have to do is wait. Again, I don't have control over the people who are walking past me, but I do know that eventually someone will get in that perfect position. And when that happens, I'm gonna be ready, and I'm gonna be shooting burst, because I don't wanna miss that right moment.
All right, it looks like someone's coming, so I'm gonna be shooting burst. Look at this image right here. It turned out exactly how I wanted. So I have a lone person, just one person, one subject, that's standing out perfectly in this reflection. You notice how the hands of that person are also in a perfect position. So they're not overlapping, they're just a little bit to the side of the person to create a beautiful silhouette in that reflection. And I also have a bit of that lantern. You could say it's a bit of a distraction, but I think it actually works well here. So I'm really happy with the image I just captured. But while I'm here, while I'm in the perfect position, I'm gonna see if I can do this again. And just so that you know, most of the times this doesn't work out because the person has to walk in the exact right position. If they're too far or too close to you, or if you're at the wrong height, maybe you're too high or too low, you're not gonna get that perfect shot. So there's some trial and error involved, but if you do this enough times, if you shoot burst, you are gonna get the shots that you need. All right, it looks like there's a woman coming in from the left and she's walking really close to the puddle. So I'm gonna shoot burst and look at that. I caught the exact right moment. The positioning of that reflection is perfect. It takes up pretty much the entire puddle reflection, but I'm not cutting off anything. So I have her entire body inside of that reflection. And because we've combined that reflection with reality, which is her shoes, we get this really beautiful, really special photo that tells an interesting story that I wouldn't be able to tell otherwise. Now here's another really cool trick. Any of these reflection shots can be flipped upside down. And if you do that, you're gonna get an entirely different image that is gonna be more surreal. So it's the kind of thing that a human eye is never gonna see, but you can simply rotate the image by 180 degrees and then you get an entirely different image that looks even more interesting. All right, it looks like the sky is starting to clear up a little bit and those puddles are drying up fast. But that's okay with me because it's not just puddles that you can use for reflection shots. In fact, anything that reflects light can be used for a reflection image. And if I'm in the city, two things that definitely come to mind are glass surfaces, especially glass windows and glass walls, as well as cars. Those can both be great sources of reflections. So let's keep exploring and let's see what else we can come up with. Okay, check this out. I found this hotel where the entire wall of the hotel is covered in dark glass. And that dark glass surface is pretty much a perfect mirror. So if I wanna create a perfectly symmetrical shot using a mirror-like reflection, then this is exactly what I need. So how am I gonna do this? Well, first of all, I have to make sure I hold the iPhone correctly. So normally I hold the phone like this, but that's not gonna work because the lenses are here and that's actually pretty far from the glass. So if I want to create the perfect mirror-like reflection, I need to move my iPhone like this because now those lenses are gonna be much closer to the glass. And I wanna get as close as I can, so I'm gonna literally support my iPhone against the glass. And now you'll see that we have this perfect mirror-like reflection where the left side and the right side is perfectly reflected. So it's already an interesting shot, but of course I'm not done yet. Now, one thing I have to be careful with is the focus here. This glass actually takes up half of my image and the glass is really close to my lens. So there's some risk that the iPhone might set the focus on the glass, not where I want the focus to be set on my subjects. So I don't want to take any chances and that's why I'm gonna set and lock focus myself. So I'm gonna tap and hold my finger right around here and I expect this to be roughly the distance where my subjects are gonna be when I'll be pressing the shutter. Now that I've locked the focus, I can be confident that the images are gonna be sharp when those subjects walk in the frame. Right now, everyone is still kind of far away, so I'm gonna also switch to that 2X lens. And you'll see that now I'm much closer to the people that are approaching. Also notice that I framed a shot where it's symmetrical. So I want that vertical line where the reflection is separated from reality to be right in the center of the frame. And look at this, there's 
There's a family with two dogs, but I don't just have two dogs here, I have four. So I'll keep pressing that shutter. And I think this is the shot I was looking for. You'll see I have four identical dogs in the frame and they happen to be spaced out about evenly. So I'm getting a really strong repetition shot. It's not just the right side that's being repeated on the left. I also have the dogs repeating themselves. And now I have a shot of four perfectly spaced out dogs that all look pretty much the same. So that's really interesting. I know there are many other reflection photography opportunities in this city. So let's keep walking around and let's see what else we can find. All right, look what I found. Over there in that window, the sun is being reflected. And that reflected sun is also being reflected in the windshield of this car. Let me show you what that looks like. That looks just surreal, and I'm really happy with what I'm seeing. So I'm gonna go ahead and press the shutter. Now you'll notice two things. One, the windshield of this car is curved. And that curve essentially means that whatever gets reflected in this windshield will also get curved. So I'm getting an interesting optical effect because of the shape of this windshield. Now, another thing to notice here is that the ultra-wide angle lens is also kind of curved. It doesn't shoot perfectly straight lines. And while typically this would be a disadvantage, here, where all the lines are already curved, it's really working in my favor. So you'll see that the buildings on the left are kind of curved, and the reflection of that building in the windshield is curved even more. So I get a really interesting shot, but I think it could be even better if we had a person. Now, if you look at the left-hand side of the frame, you'll see that I have the shaft of light. So if someone walked through that shaft of light, then I'd get an even better shot. So what I'm gonna do is just stay here with the shot already framed up, and I'm gonna wait. And when that moment is right, I'll press the shutter again. All right, it looks like someone's coming, so I'll quickly grab a couple of shots. Now look at that shot. It has everything I was hoping for. I have all those bent lines. I have this beautiful reflection in the windshield, and I have a person standing in the exact right position in full stride. It doesn't get any better than this. And of course, I can only capture a photo like this if I'm paying attention to reflections. New photographers typically think that it's really hard to find reflections, but as you train your eye more and more, you're gonna start noticing those reflective surfaces everywhere. So as a photographer, make sure you're always paying attention to reflections, and if you can include them in your shots, you'll often be able to show the world to people like they've never seen it before. And if you can find an interesting way to combine that reflection with reality, or if you can frame up the kind of shot that people aren't used to seeing, you can create something truly special. So make sure you pay attention to those reflections, include them in your photos, and if you do that, they're going to turn out so much better.